Hey everybody, Axe Wizard here, welcome back. When last we left off, we just implemented movement in our little space game here. And now we're gonna work on um, shooting lasers. So typically how I approach like making projectiles is I typically just create a object for the projectile and I can set the sprite of that object to be whatever I want to use. So I might have like a, a, a laser, like this placeholder pew pew. I might have like a missile. I might have like a beam or something. And I can change those just by switching the, the sprite. And then I can also, you know, determine how that moves. So let's just create an object here called object uh, OBJ. Uh, I'm just going to do projectile because again, this is going to be uh, more of a, a generic universal object that I can use for now. You know what? Let's not set a sprite since this is going to be generic. When I, when I create this projectile to, to shoot it, I'm going to set the sprite there. Now with every projectile, we want to make sure that we want to make sure that this doesn't just shoot forever. So because my game is pretty empty right now, there's no baddies to shoot. And even if there was, if I miss, I mean, you saw earlier how like when I go off the screen, I don't just like stop existing. I, I, I can pop back on to the screen. So that means if I shoot bullets out there, they're going to keep going forever unless I do something to prevent that. So there's a few things that, that we can do. Um, two easy ways of doing that are we can make sure that if they go beyond the bounds of the room, they just instantly destroy themselves. But sometimes like, you know, you might have a big ship battle that might be hitting multiple stuff and you know, there could be ships all around you. I think that's kind of a cop out. So what we can do is we can add a sort of a, a timer to how long the projectile will last. And I think this also gives us some more flexibility too, because maybe we might have uh, some light cannons that can shoot super fast, but they have a shorter range and they don't do much damage. Whereas we can have like some medium cannons that have a longer range that shoot a little slower that do more damage. Um, this gives us that, that flexibility. So what we can do is we're gonna set um, a variable called expire. And I'm going to just default this to, uh, to, to 60. So it should last roughly one second. So now that I create this variable, I'm going to go add a step event to this projectile object. And here I'm going to ensure our projectile does not last forever. And what I'm going to do is that every step I'm going to do expire minus equals one. Now you could do just expire minus minus to just subtract one from whatever the value is. I like to be more explicit because I feel it's, it's, it's more readable to see what's going on. And it's, I think it's more readable to, to newer programmers. So I typically be more explicit with it. Um, again, it's just flavor, whatever you want to do. Game maker will work with both. So whatever you want to do there. And, uh, so we're, we're decrementing our expire variable. And what we want to do now is if expire is less than or equal to zero, time to destroy this object or destroy this instance rather. So what, thankfully game maker gives us a tool to do that. We can just do instance destroy. Uh, now this function has a bunch of optional arguments that you can pass into it, but if you just leave it blank, so you don't include any extra arguments within the parentheses here, it'll just destroy the instance that, that that's calling this function. So since we're calling this function, it's going to destroy our instance of object projectile. So this should work here. So there we go. We have a, we have a projectile that so far, the only thing we programmed it to, to do is just to destroy itself after a set time. So now what we can do here is that we can let's see let's just start by so how do we want to attack so i'm thinking that 
I want to be able to like have a primary and secondary attack and then maybe even some other ones. So I think since I'm doing keyboard and mouse, I think left click is going to be primary attack and then right click is going to be my secondary attack. So what we can do is that we've done our, our speed calculations. Now we're going to handle, handle attacking. So we're going to do primary attack. And what we're going to do here is that we're going to check if our mouse is pressed. So if, and if we do mouse, you can see we have a function called mouse check button. So there's two ways that, that we can do it. I can have it so every time you click it shoots, which I think would be pretty tiring. Or we can have it so you can hold down the mouse button and it will just keep shooting lasers at a set like interval. I think that's probably the better way of going. So I'm just going to do mouse check button. And then the button that we're going to check for is just a uh, MB left. And again, I know that exists, but if you wanted to see how to use this, you can always go to the help manual and you can search for this function. So if we go mouse check button. You can see there's a bunch of uh, preset constants here that we can use uh, already. So side button, none, any, um, and I think that you can even add other mouse buttons. So if you have like a really big gamer mouse, you could probably add more of those, but I'm just going to stick to the left and right click. So primary attack is left button. So what we're going to do here is we're going to attack, create a projectile and set its variables. So what we're gonna be doing here is, um, GameMaker has this cool function called instance create. Um, GameMaker Studio 2 has two variants of that. Instance create, so if we just type in instance create, we have depth and layer. So layer you saw earlier, like on my on my room editor over here at the top left, we have instances and background. So if, if I wanted to create more layers, I can actually specify whatever layer I wanted to create that on. Since, since there could be potentially thousands of bullets on a screen at one time, I'm going to do depth. So depth is kind of like the, the Z axis for a 2D game. So the greater the depth is, the farther behind it is of, of everything else. So if my ship has a depth of zero, but my bullet has a depth of five, the bullet would appear um, behind the uh, ship. So what we're, we're gonna do depth. So the X, Y of where we wanna create it, we're gonna create this projectile at our own X, Y. And the depth, we're going to do our own depth, and we're just going to make it like plus five. You know, we're just going to give some space. We want it to appear under us, and it's going to shoot out. Now, the object that we want to create is going to be object projectile. And I think that that's all we need. So we're creating a projectile. So if, if we run this, it should work, right? Not. So it's not doing anything. First of all, I didn't set a sprite for the projectile, so it, it's invisible. Uh, secondly, if we did have a sprite, it would just be standing still. We didn't add anything to it. So instance create, this function actually returns a ID th that we can reference. So what, what we can do is that we can declare this a local variable. So if I just name this local uh, var proj for projectile, so this local variable here, because I'm specifying var, this variable is created in this code block and it's only accessible in this code block and GameMaker will clean it up as soon as this code block ends. So this is a, I don't have to keep creating variables in my create uh, event. I can also declare quick one-off variables on the fly within my code using var. So now that I declared uh, this variable called pr uh, projectile. Now I can start setting things for, so I, for example, I can do prod uh, projectile dot, and I'm going to set the speed uh, to be like 15. So it'll start moving at 15, uh, as like 15 pixels per step or whatever. 
I can also set the proj uh, sprite index, which is going to be the sprite that it's going to use. And I can set this to SBR placeholder pew pew. Cool. Another thing we also need to do is we need to set the image angle that it's going to be traveling at. So projectile image angle. And we're going to set this to our own image angle. And we're also going to set the, the direction that it's going to be traveling. So projectile.direction. And we're going to set this to our own image angle, wherever we are facing. So this should work now. So if we hit play, but now you see a big problem. We're just spraying. We have no control over, you know, how, how, oh God, where am I going? Oh God, I'm lost. I'm lost. <laughs> so it's just basically shooting like 60 rounds a second, which is way too much. So what we need to do is we need to, uh, we're going to do some uh, attack variables. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do, uh, let's see, I'm going to do P for primary weapon, P timer, and I'm going to, uh, I'll do camel case, P timer equals, and I'm going to set this to zero. I, I sort of did something like this in my like wizard video I did a little while ago. Uh, we're gonna tweak it to, to work though. P timer max equals, let's say we shoot maybe three times a second. So roughly, since step event runs roughly 60 times a second, split that by three gives us 20. So that's where these values are, are, are coming from. So now what we can do here is that we can do uh, attack timers. And what I'm going to do is that I set attack timer to zero. That means like I'm ready to fire immediately. And after I fire, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my, uh, let's see, let's do this. After we have fired, uh, set our attack cooldown. So what we're going to do is we're going to set uh, P timer max. Uh, or actually no, P timer equals P timer max. Sorry. So we just fired. We're going to set um, P timer to P timer max. Now what we're going to do is we're first going to check can, uh, are we ready to shoot? And we're going to add a simple if statement. If P timer equals zero. Now we do a double equal sign because we're trying to compare, we're not assigning. So you see how we're doing speed equals zero here? We're assigning speed to equal zero. Here we're comparing if P timer equals zero or not. So that's why we have the double equal sign here. So if P timer equals zero, we're ready to shoot. So I'm gonna cut all this i'm going to move this in this code block here and i'm going to indent it properly there we go so now that we have this set uh this should prevent us from being able to spam this this allows us to control the, the rate of fire and then what we can do to make that cooldown work is that we can do a, a timer so we can say if p timer is greater than zero then we want to just decrement that uh, P timer um, my, by one. So if it's not zero, like you're not ready to fire, just decrement it. This is how we do our little cooldown counter here. So now if I hit play on this, you see now we're shooting. Cool. Awesome sauce. Now, there's a big problem with this. If you see on my sprite here, I've got like two cannons on the side. I don't have a cannon on my nose. So it looks like I'm firing from the nose of my ship. But that's not right. I have two cannons on here, right? I should be able to um, fire from both of those. So... And while I'm thinking of that, 
What if I have a bigger ship that has maybe six cannons? I don't want to program like a P-Timer 1, a P-Timer 2, a P-Timer 3. I want to be able to dynamically assign, um, to, to dynamically handle how many weapons a ship has. So I'm going to stop this episode here, and in the next episode, we're going to tackle how we do that. So basically here we have a working prototype of firing something, but now we're going to need to refine that and future-proof it for, for this game to make it handle multiple weapons dynamically without hard coding every timer and every value and stuff like that. We also want to be able to handle things like mixing weapons. Say for example, if I have a big ship that's got, you know, two light cannons, two medium cannons, and maybe like a rocket launcher, well, those are all going to have different variables. They're going to have different attack timers, different weapon speeds, different projectile sprites to use, different, uh, you know, different speeds they, they travel at, how much damage that they do different behavior when they collide with an enemy. So we're going to need to handle that stuff. So keep watching and see how I handle that in the next episode.